Okay, so uh, you have to understand the lab regimen. So on this half of the presentation, I have tried to uh, give the lab regimen, and the lab regimen is basically the twenty-seven doses of PCG installations. The six doses are of induction, weekly doses for six weeks, and then at three months, six months, twelve months. If there is an intermediate risk bladder cancer, you stop at 12 months. If there is a high risk bladder cancer, you continue till 18, 24, 30, 36, till three years. So for an intermediate risk till one year, BCG, for a high risk till three years. Just mention it very clearly when you are asked, how long would you give a BCG, intramethical BCG in a high risk patient? It has to be a three year course, 27 installations overall. So if, at three months, three installations, six months, three installations. So every, uh, when the patient's coming at three months, there are three installations, okay? So you are doing a cystoscopy. You know that for a high-risk bladder cancer, you are doing a cystoscopy at three months. You are doing a cystoscopy at six months and nine months and 12 months, so on, till uh, three monthly, till two years, six monthly, till uh, for the next two years. Is it clear so far? Now, once you know this concept of BCG LAM regimen, try to apply it with the recurrences. Now, the definition of BCG refractory has to be very clear. When the patient is has come to you at three months and you got a, so the patient has come to you with only the induction course. Now, the, you got a cystoscopy done, the patient has a tumor, you resect it, and the patient has a T1 high-grade histopath. That is a BCG refractory. That is done. You are not going to give the patient BCG anymore. If the patient has a T1 high-grade recurrence at three months, no need to continue with the BCG anymore. However, if this was not a T1 high grade, suppose this was a T, suppose this was a TA high grade. If this was a TA high grade, in that case, continue with the re-induction once again. Continue with the induction course once again. And, uh, or you can continue with the first course of maintenance. So you can continue with the three doses of maintenance at the three months, or you can offer the patient a reinduction course. However, if the patient has T1 high grade, you level the patient for a BCG refractory. Okay, now suppose the patient had a TA high grade, or the suppose the three month cystoscopy was normal. You start the three month uh, maintenance, the patient comes to you at six months or 12 months, suppose all the uh, previous cystoscopies were normal. Suppose the patient develops any high-grade recurrence during maintenance. Suppose the patient had received the three-month course. Now the patient at six months cystoscopy, he developed a recurrence in a bladder. And this recurrence on histopathology, irrespective of whether it is T1, irrespective of whether it is TA, this, if it is a high-grade recurrence, it, has, it is a BCG refractory. Now we start giving importance to the TA tumors as well. So uh, this clarity has to be there in the viva. When do you call a BCG refractory? Any T1 high-grade recurrence at three months or any high-grade recurrence during the maintenance. Is it okay? At three months, when we are doing a cystoscopy, the patient has not yet started the maintenance. So we this criteria is applicable only from six months onwards because the patient has received a prior maintenance three doses at three months. Is it clear so far? The BCG refractory concept is clear so far. Any doubt? It's clear. Okay. So now, uh, suppose there is no problem. The patient has received BCG, no side effects, nothing. The patient has uh, all the follow-up uh, schedule was uh, on time and there was no recurrence and the patient goes home. Now comes back after, suppose after completing the three years of uh, BCG uh, treatment, he comes back with a recurrence. Now, this time you don't call it a refractory. This time the term is a BCG relapse. So BCG relapse is when you have completed the whole course of BCG and now the patient is developing a recurrence, then you call it a BCG relapse. Now, uh, so uh, having understood these two terms of BCG failure, they come under the broad headings of BCG failure. So one, we have understood BCG refractory. Second, we have understood BCG relapse. Now having understood this, try to understand one important concept. What is adequate exposure of BCG? So adequate exposure, when do you call the patient has received adequate doses of BCG? Okay, great. So if the patient has received five out of uh, six induction course, or the patient has received two out of three 
the patient has received two out of three of the first maintenance course. If the patient has received at least this much of BCG on time, probably he missed one induction, probably he missed one, one of the first maintenance scores, no problem. If he has received this seven doses of BCG at least, we call the patient has been adequately given the BCG. The maximum effect of BCG occurs after the first few doses. So if the patient has received this much of BCG exposure, we call it the patient as adequate exposure. Now, what is the application of this concept? Suppose the patient develops side effects to BCG, what I was asking and uh, Dr. Victor very, uh, very clearly, he mentioned the side effects can be minor side effects, mild side effects like cystitis, like symptoms. However, intolerant is defined as when the patient develops severe uh, systemic side effects and you cannot give the BCG anymore. The patient will not tolerate the BCG because of the systemic severe side effects. So in those patients, you have to stop the BCG. Now, when you stop the BCG, you your first concern is whether the patient has received adequate exposure or not. Your first concern is whether the patient had received five out of six, two out of three doses or not. So if the patient has received the adequate exposure, you counsel the patient, okay, your adequate exposure has been there. We can just keep you on the surveillance schedule. We can just keep you on the surveillance schedule. But if the patient has not received the adequate exposure and he's intolerant, we have to offer the patient the alternative treatment, which is a radical cystectomy. The alternative treatments, uh, the first line is radical cystectomy, but it's not the only uh, treatment option. You can offer the patient intravesical. There, uh, there are trials, intravesical pembrolizumab. There are uh, intravesical high-wake hyperthermic mitomycin. So there are trials. Uh, you can mention that if the patient refuses radical cystectomy, we can offer these alternative options as well. However, the basic concept is if the patient is intolerant to BCG, whether he has received adequate exposure, if he has received adequate exposure, we keep the patient on surveillance. And also at the same time, this is one of the options that gets added after adequate exposure. It's not that we deprive the patient from radical cystectomy. We Arina? offer the patient, uh, we offer the patient uh, radical cystectomy, yeah. we offer the patient surveillance, we offer the patient other alternative treatment options. Surveillance becomes an option once the patient has received adequate exposure. If the patient has not received adequate exposure, there has to be either a treatment option with a cystectomy or a treatment option with a uh treatment option with the uh, alternative treatment options okay you cannot just keep you cannot keep the patient on surveillance now suppose the patient has received adequate exposure you keep the patient on surveillance the patient does not want cystectomy the patient says okay adequate exposure has been there you gave me an option of surveillance and he chose uh, he chose to be on surveillance and on surveillance the patient develops recurrence and this time also high grade recurrence so any high grade recurrence on a patient who is in, who has received an adequate exposure previously is known as a bcg unresponsive tumor okay so you don't re repeat a bcg in them you offer the patient a cystectomy this terminology has to be clear uh, what do you mean by bcg refractory what do you mean by bcg relapse what do you mean by adequate exposure what do you mean by bcg intolerant what do you mean by bcg unresponsive all this come under the one umbrella bcg failure is it clear any doubts 